Welcome back to the San Diego Opera Podcast. I'm Nick Ravellis, and my special guest today is Rigoletto, Stephen Powell, baritone. Welcome back. Wow, thank you. Good to be the here. The 20th time yeah. or... 10th production. I count 10th it. production. 10th production here. Yeah. But how many performances in 10 productions? Oh, well, golly. Yeah. Over, over 50, I'm 50. sure. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. in the early days, we were five performances per production. Right. So yeah, I'm sure it's close to 50. And here yeah. you are. Yes. Doing... What I consider, it's got to be one of the m- more taxing Verdi baritone roles. Um, yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's, it well, the, it's taxing in a couple ways. One, vocally. Yeah. Technically, it's, uh, it's a real bear. You have to really get it into your body and map it out. Um, so just the way it's written, uh, it's pretty high. Um, yeah, it sits exactly. It's pretty high for the baritone. Well, and you've got, you've got moments like, for instance, in the duet with Gilda. You've got these long, tender, lovely lines, but mm-hmm. then you have to turn around and sing Cortigiani, you know, something that's going to be right. really stentorian and very, very active and out there. Exactly. And what the what, contrast. Right. So the, that adds to the difficulty is that there's a lot of agitation physically, and I have to uh, I run up and down the steps, and I'm moving here and moving there, and I'm hunched over as a, as a hunchback. So physically, getting my body to be stable uh, within all that running around and the agitation of my character, that also adds to the difficulty of the role. For yeah, sure. it's yeah. got to be. Absolutely, yeah. And that's why I love it. It's challenging. Yeah. It's, it's one of my favorite roles. It's because of all those things we've just stated. It's a real challenge. I've got to really focus and be on. Uh, so I like that about it. Is, is there another Verdi role that's comparable? I and mean, then the one that comes to mind is Iago. I mean, but... but, but um, 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 in Traviata, uh, Germain, it's not even close to no, what... No, <laughs> Germain is a, sort of a... I don't want to say it's a breeze. No, no, I would not never at all. say that about not any Verity. But it, it is definitely uh, less physical, yeah. and it's not as long, not nearly as long. Right, right. So the length of the role of Rigoletto also adds to it. So uh, you said uh, Iago, that's also uh, pretty high, and there's some technically difficult spots. Um, so, and I've done that, and that is a challenge as well. I, I have to say, though, of all the Verdi roles, in addition to Rigoletto, it's Falstaff. Ah, uh, well, no, that makes sense. Because Falstaff yeah. is so physical. Yeah. Uh, most of the time you wear a fat suit, right? And right. You're covered with costumes, and you're moving, and it's the, the words, the text, that's really challenging in Falstaff. So, after I did that the first time, I felt, I think, more tired, even though vocally it's not quite as difficult as Rigoletto or Iago, I felt more sort of overall exhaustion yeah. from Falstaff than I did from the others. Comedy's so. always <laughs> yeah. more and difficult so because, it's, yeah. because it's more physical. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. It's much more physical. Mm. So Now, have you done this particular production before? Uh, no, I have not. I have not. Um, I think this is my fifth production of Rigoletto, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but this one's new. So there are lots of steps? Physically, <laughs> yes, I believe that. I haven't. We haven't been on the set yet in in the uh, in the uh, theater. But um, from what I'm told and seen in the picture, yeah, there's plenty of steps. There's, <laughs> and of course, I have to go up at you know oblong and sort of bent over and and limping, which makes it more physically taxing as well. I can't just go up the steps yeah. like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You so. know, I sat in on rehearsal last week, um, and. There, there's something that that I don't I don't think we've ever addressed in one of our podcasts, and that is the concept of marking mm-hmm. when you're rehearsing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because you you cannot sing full out for three weeks of rehearsals and then go on, um, you know, opening night and expect to be in tip top right, shape. That, correct. So can you talk a little, uh, just address that a little bit so that our audience understands it a little better? Right. So the term marking really means singing. Um, not full out, uh, not really half voice, but um, either an octave down sometimes, or you sing the line in the right uh, uh, on the right staff, but you just don't give as much energy. And it actually is a really important skill to learn. I would uh, think for the yeah. very reasons you just mentioned that you cannot sing full out. Uh, I can't. You know, there are some singers who sing all the time, and I marvel at that honestly. And I, it, I guess it depends on the role. Uh, but there are moments in Rigoletto that I that I do 
sing as much as I can in rehearsals just because I need the repetition. Mm -hmm. I need to feel it in my body. I need the progression of the role. Um, but not every time. So marking is a valuable uh, skill to maintain and to learn. And I, do, I, I uh, talk about that a lot with my colleagues and with my students too. So um, it, it, it allows you to get the staging in your body the blocking, the character, you can still do all those things and give energy in the rehearsals, but not necessarily uh, add that energy into the vocal production. Yeah, it's so. the one thing that I think surprises people who are able to sit in on a rehearsal uh, and, and not understanding, you know, why is, why doesn't that person have a bigger voice? <laughs> they yeah. go stepping onto the Civic Theater at a 3,000 seat house. Well, it's this, it's, yeah. it, it's this very, this very technique that I think, um, as you say, helps save you energy yeah. and, and, and keeps you healthy. And also, often the, the rooms in which we rehearse are not terribly great acoustically. Right. So <clears throat> you're not going to get the ping or the ring back from the theater, the acoustic that uh, often you rely on when you're on stage. So you have to be careful to, to not give in that regard. Um, there are people who sing too much in rehearsal, uh, they get tired or they can't hear themselves right so they begin to do some things technically that aren't exactly what they should be doing. Yeah. So, so that's also the, the purpose of marking is to keep yourself in your body uh, within the role in the context of the vocal lines but yeah. to not give too much because you can't get the same kind of ambiance and uh, energy back from the theater that you would on stage. Now you're doing all these great Verdi roles. Mm. Uh, yeah. Is there one that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do that you're looking forward to doing? Uh, I have yet to do uh, Forza, Forza del Destino, uh, or Nabucco. Ah, so those two uh, are on my list to do. You've done Macbeth. I've done Macbeth once. I did it uh, about two and a half years ago w uh, with Michigan Opera Theater. Mm. And I would love to do that again. <laughs> yeah. I would get my hands on that one it's again great, because that's oh, fantastic. Yeah. And, and of course, the role is one of the greatest in all of English but literature. So. Who does Forza anymore? Well, that's you know, the it's, thing. It's, um, many people do. This is the force of destiny, la forza del destino. Very, very rarely done. I've only mm. seen it once in my life, and that was in the 80s at the Met. Ages yeah. and ages ago. One of the last productions I knew about was uh, Washington National Opera. That mm -hmm. was a couple of years ago now, maybe maybe even three or four or five. But uh, yeah, it's not done very often. So I'm, you know, I'm hopeful it'll come along. Um, are, are there roles coming up in the future, or is there something other than Verdi Rep that excites you and, and that you're looking forward to? Yes, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm in the fall going to be doing Sweeney Todd. Ah, a first? No. No, it's one of my favorite roles. I've done it yeah. probably five or six times. Oh, great. And that is just fun because uh, it's lower. It's really a bass baritone, but, but it's, it's not too bad. And I can really just concentrate on the character. Obviously, the singing is still somewhat operatic. Absolutely, you know, yeah. writes that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it's just a fun show to be a part of, and the characters just—it's you know, so great, so incredibly fun to play. Do you know um, who your Mrs. Lovett? Uh, uh, she is a Broadway actress, and her name now escapes me. I'm so embarrassed to say. Oh, that's uh, okay. That's okay. It's probably on their website. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll Michigan check Michigan Opera Theater. Yeah, <laughs> we'll check. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that show. Uh, yeah, it's great. I can't get enough of it. It's Operatic in scope. Absolutely. You know, yeah, so yeah, which is why a lot of opera companies uh, do it. And so. so much fun. Oh, great. Um, and and uh, back to Rigoletto, rehearsals are going well? Rehearsals are going very well. We have a great group of people. It's a whole new team to me. I mean, I, I, I don't know anyone on the team except you. Really? So the uh, Gilda, uh, 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 Alisa, is is new to us. And she is. And Scott, fun, fun. The, the Duke, is new to oh, us. Oh, Scott, yes. So, so a fun fact, uh, Alisa, uh, the first time I did Rigoletto in Cincinnati, she was the page. Ah. And she was still at CCM, I think, uh -huh. as a graduate student. So now we've come full circle a little bit, and she's now playing Gilda. That's so Her great. career's going very well. She's but, lovely. But also a new conductor, Stephen, and a, mm -hmm. a, a new director, Michael Cavanaugh. So it's it's wonderful to be bringing new folks back, you know, into San Diego for the first time. And, yeah. and I, again, in rehearsal, I just felt, uh, again, this this very positive uh, energy about every everyone 
you know, working uh, in such a positive and friendly way uh, to yeah, make this happen. Exactly. Everybody's really very professional. We're all willing to uh, do what we're asked and work with each other. Um, Michael Cavanaugh is a great director. I worked with him once before. Uh, he's Canadian, uh, but super organized, has the plan laid out, very easy to work with and uh, makes sense the way he yeah. Yeah. The way it puts it together. Stephen White, I've worked with before, um, great conductor, uh, and the two of them together are working really nicely. They, they've they've uh, combined in the rehearsal to to have a, a nice camaraderie as well. So the whole uh, the whole process so far has been really delightful. Just mm -hmm. everybody's Scott Quinn. As first time I was supposed to sing with him last year um, in San Francisco, but that didn't happen. So now I'm finally getting to sing with him. Yeah, lovely guy. Uh, yeah, he's so great. yeah, everyone's just really perfect. Uh, well, and I get the opportunity to interview each and every one of them this week so I'm, I'm really excited about that so thank you Stephen uh, for stopping in um, we're all very much looking forward to having Rigoletto returned like like you an old friend coming back to the yeah. stage of the Civic Theater uh, haven't seen Rigoletto and I, I think it's been 10 or 12 years since really? we last did well, it so uh, this I'm is, thrilled to be here this I'm is really exciting. really happy about this great yeah. well thank you thank you very much